This video is brought to you by Toys Arama UK. Use promo code TURTLETALK upon checkout and receive up to 10% off of these selected lines. That's promo code TURTLETALK. Link is in the description. What is going on Toy Fan? Project Piper Customs here and welcome back to another brand new instalment of Toy Photography, A Beginner's Guide. Now if you're just starting off into toy photography and you're looking at your collection and wanting to do more with it, then this series is just for you. And in this penultimate episode, we're going to be looking at one of the final pieces of the puzzle and that is camera settings for the DSLR digital camera and a smartphone. Now if all that sounds good to you and you want to learn more about toy photography, then please consider hitting that like button and the subscribe button. I will link a playlist to the previous videos in this series in the description and the pinned comment. So let's get started. All right, and here we are back in the setup. Gotta love the alleyway setup, but this time without a figure in front of the camera. No, no, no. This time we have the devices themselves, the DSLR and the smartphone, okay? And now we're gonna be looking at the camera settings and going over a couple of the settings for you. But here we are with the two devices that you're primarily gonna be using, okay? So now, firstly, I just wanna say off the bat that I am not a professional photographer, so please don't come at me in the comments. I'm still very much a student of photography as everyone else is as well, all right? So I don't know everything. I'm not gonna teach you everything because that will be taken away from some of the other awesome videos that are already on this platform. And I'll be linking a few of my favorites that have helped me learn a bit of this and a little bit of this. Turn off you, go away. Uh, so yeah, I'll be linking those as they explain things 10 times better than I ever could. What I will do is I will show you the settings that I adjust when I approach toy photography, okay? And the things that I do know when it comes to this. Okay, so what we're gonna do and we're gonna to get to the phone in a minute. We're gonna power this on. So here we have the three, okay? We have the shutter speed, we have the f-stop aperture, and we have the ISO. Now this is a very old camera. I keep forgetting the model it is an EOS 450D, as you can see there. Okay, so some of the newer cameras will have far more settings than, uh, than you will need, but some cool ones as well. But all of them will have these three basic ones. Okay, and these are the three, as well as the white balance, which we'll get into later, that I tinker with whenever I approach a setup. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a brief rundown of what each of them do. As I said to you before, I recommend, I'll put it here again, you're checking out this video for a far more easily digestible and in-depth look into what these settings do and how you can use them. Each three of these, the shutter speed, the f-stop aperture and the ISO all control in their own way light coming into the lens okay and that's uh that's kind of it this is what goes hand in hand with your lighting so shutter speed easy one to figure out okay the quicker the shutter speed the less light has time getting into the lens the slower the shutter speed the more time the lens is open more light can get into the lens okay the f-stop aperture again helps control some of the light but this also controls your depth of field it's like essentially giving your camera a pair of glasses and of course then we have the iso i have no idea what this word means all i know is that it's light sensitivity that this one controls okay so the higher the iso all right the light more light comes in but also increases the amount of noise going on in your picture this is where you can get grainy pictures okay and uh, yeah to reduce it obviously we reduce the iso but then it, it doesn't allow as much light into the camera and you have to adjust one of the others the way i like to look at these three settings is like juggling each one of these is a ball and i'm juggling each one and the aim for a setup with the settings is to try and get all three in that sweet spot so they can all be settled in the right place in one line. Once I've got my setup going, I will look at the light I've got in the setup and my light ideal lighting that I want, and then I go into my settings to see if I can enhance it even more. Okay, so we start off with the shutter speed. Okay, next is the f-stop, okay, the aperture, and it's these two I tend to work in conjunction when juggling most. Okay, the ISO is pretty much the setting, either you've got a low light setting or you've got a high light setting will determine which on the scale you want your ISO. For the most part, that ball isn't really being juggled for very long, but it is the last one I like to address. 
So it's mostly these two, and I, use, I work in tandem in getting these two at the level I want. Okay, so if I want a high depth of field, if there's more than one character that I want to be in focus, then I'll increase the uh, the aperture, and of course my button for doing that is here. If I go to that one, it flicks it over there, and with this dial on top, right there, okay, I can, inc I can increase it, decrease it, increase it, like so. So this is the kind of things, depending on the setup that I have and the lighting, will determine how I juggle these two about. Once I've reached a nice comfortable sweet spot between these two, and then I'll look at the ISO and determine on my lighting on the scale that I want it. Normally I try and keep it at about eight. You know, that's kind of for me the little sweet spot because I primarily do dark, um, dark shoots okay the settings and the environments that i like to shoot are normally in you know nighttime settings every now and then i'll do a daylight one but because all of my photography is indoors for this medium with action figures i hover around the 400 to the 800 mark so i don't get that noise but there's enough light coming in which will pick it up and it will be nice and crisp and of course, the last setting that I tinker with, which will help in any case, is the white balance. So if we hit that on here, we get a little selection. And the only way to really show you the differences between these is to actually pop the lens and show you. I like to do manual focus via the lens. Okay, I like to do that. Quick tip for manual focusing when you're using a camera. Okay, if you really, really want to get that sharp focus in, I use these two zoom buttons. Okay, that will zoom in. And if you need to, zoom even, even more. And then once I've got it zoomed in, I tinker with the front focal point, okay? As you can see there, it's coming in to focus. And once I've got it in the spot that I want, which is about there, I normally overshoot to see where my boundary is. And I overshoot again, and I know about there is a sweet spot. Once I've got it there, I hit back, okay? Which brings it back, and it will keep that focus locked. So with the white balance, just here and this will tell you which ones they are so right now it's on white fluorescent light okay and here we have tungsten which gives you more of a blue hue okay obviously we have the flash which is obviously what that is and in custom i tend to stay in this ballpark up here so then you've got cloudy gives it more of a orangey yellow hue okay we have shade again keeping within that yellow hue but not as much and then my favorite really being daylight which kind of gives you probably the best setting and the one i kind of normally stay on unless there's more extreme colors going on with my lighting only then will i really change it okay but as we've got the focus on the crates i'm going to take a quick picture all right and there you have it now obviously with the brightness of the lcd display here of the viewfinder all right you will be you know a little bit bright in the lens of this camera but as you can see there, that's not too bad. But whilst we have it in hand, let's look at, put that back together and let's have a look at the phone and compare the different settings that you can do on the phone. Thanks to Nathsu29 for the comment. Let's have a look at the phone. All right, so let's boot up the phone part. And here we are, let's take the camera out of the way. Okay, so with the settings, obviously standard, you have your focus okay so we can have darker we can have brighter standard settings that you'll find on most cameras i can only assume you'll get that with the iphone let's take a picture all right there we are you can see the difference in obviously the lenses obviously with the cameras here as i've mentioned before them being in the corner they have a wider spread okay all right, whereas the DSLR uh, it kind of gives you that letterbox feeling. This one gives you more open space within your viewfinder. So take that into account when you're using a phone and doing your setup. There'll be more of your uh, background you'll need to fill so you don't get a lot of dead space. But where NASU29 was referring to, especially on an Android, so if you scroll this way to more, Obviously, you see here you have all the different gimmicks. You've got your slow mo, you've got your panorama, you've got your food. There's actually one for food, crazy. And over here, you've got Pro. All right, and here, Pro gives you some DSLR kind of settings. You've got your ISO, you've got your white balance, and you've got your shutter speed. Obviously, you can see it is quite dark, and that's because the ISO is at 100. Okay, so if we increase it, all right, the highest ISO is 800 on the phone lowest is one and it gets dark so i'm going to bring it to about four and then we go for the white balance 
as you can see this one doesn't really give you individual options it's more of a scale so the lower you bring it the more of a blue hue you get in the center you kind of get that medium and then higher up you go you can obviously get that orangey hue so let's go for a little bit of a, a colder colder setting and this here being the shutter speed will increase how much light comes into the lens obviously the higher you go that way we're in the minus so let's bring it to about here okay that looks pretty good to me get your focus in and shoot let's have a look at that okay so there's a lot more controlled light going on all right it's not as uh, washed out over here as you can see before okay and short sure, gives you that nice more of a crisp daytime all right this one very very bright very very colorful you know you may prefer that that's totally up to you but here i do feel like a lot of it's more um toned down a little bit and you can actually draw you into the thing you're actually want to have in focus which obviously will be your figure or so on and so forth okay so these are just some of the extra things that you can do with your mobile phone now i think it's time we got demonstrating with someone in the view all right we are back and we have our subject matter in the camera and we have the kessler wolf from necker from american world in london absolute beast of a fig fig of the year i gave it last year and yeah i've been wanting to get this guy in front of a camera i thought why not now eh okay all right now i just wanted to show you with an alternative mobile phone device and i'm actually recording this through the camera i'm shooting this whole video through and that is on my samsung galaxy s9 okay the one that we've been demonstrating with here this is part of the uh, a series of samsung's all right but i wanted to see if this one had similar features because obviously you know the higher the model digital camera uh, the more settings it will have i wanted to see if the same would be true with the samsung's with the phones we have our Kessler Wolf in the frame, obviously the same as you can do before, which was, you know, darken it and brighten it. Okay, so we've got that there. So we're going to go to the more section. All right. Obviously, you've got the same bunch of uh, gimmicks as you would. And we're going to go to the pro mode. All right. Wow. Okay. All right. Yes, we do. Look at this. Look at this. All right. So we've got the ISO a standard. Okay, but we do have an f-stop aperture on this model. Okay, so it kind of proves that the higher model phone you have, especially with a Samsung, uh, the camera features on the pro mode will be a lot more. You'll include a lot more DSLR style features uh, in their settings. Um, for some reason, the shutter speed isn't highlighted. I'm not sure why. Um, and we have autofocus or I think manual, manual focus. We've got our white balance here and let's just check this one up the top, manual. Okay. All right, so we can actually adjust the highlights, the shadow, saturation. Okay, cool. We can actually adjust that in the video as well. All right, we've got our white balance, so it's quite cool right now. So if you bring that tin up, go for a bit more of a neutral, like so. Let's just, there you do. There you go. Get you posed up proper. Okay, and let's have a look at the autofocus. Okay, and right. All right, okay. Oh, here we go. Look, we've got manual. We got a manual focus on a phone. I didn't even know this existed. All right, I wish all this was on the mobile phones I was using when I first started toy photography. Uh, would have been a lot better. Um, but alas, we are here now. Okay, so, all right, I think I know what's going on here. This is interesting. So of course, the, the focus on this, and this is a little new for me, I'm just learning this right now. So okay, so don't roast me for not knowing this before. But obviously the green areas that it's highlighting is obviously highlighting where the focus is so obviously right here we've got the focus on the eyes and the face and we go back focus on the body and further back the green area right now is focusing on the backdrop as you can tell because the wolf is blurry all right that was a bit of fun discovering all that so what we're going to do now i think is we're going to dress this setup uh, right up we're going to give it a good old once over get some you know some accessories in dress it up a bit better get some dynamic lighting in and i think yeah we're going to take a couple of shots with the cell phone with this one so we can utilize all of this lot okay i'm going to do a nighttime shot and a daytime one primarily in this setup as i've got it here and uh, then we're going to move on and do a night and day shot um probably different setups but we're going to use the dslr camera and yeah i'll go over the settings and yeah we'll compare the results at the end so let's get to it
All right, and here we are. As you can see, I've dressed the area a little bit with some, you know, some rubbish and just some trash, so it will flesh out the scene a little bit more. And so we just slightly readjusted the figure, added a little bit of more dramatic lighting. Got obviously the purple in the back there, a little bit of backlighting on the backdrop, and of course we've got this main lamp. And as you can see, it's just creeping in, highlighting his face as if it's moonlight, as if he's poking his face out into that lovely moon. All right, so yeah, as you can see, we have our settings here. So I'll go through them, uh, go through them quick with you obviously we got the ISO at 200 nice and low as it's a low lighting uh, shot okay we have the aperture open at 115 again I don't know why you can see it there I don't know why my shutter speed is not highlighted something I have to play with clearly uh, autofocus on white balance at 4000 K and of course the manual which I will tap now for you all right there we are okay so we've got the shadow slightly reduced Got a little bit of highlights a little bit of saturation reduced a little bit on the contrast and the tint is the same okay and then just as i've noticed now throw it over to this side and we've got these two little gems up here again things you would find on a digital camera so we're going to explore this top one and this is obviously the um the autofocus area all right so as you can see it's giving you a little grid or the center all right so that's that one there and if we hit this one and we've got the metering obviously we've got it on center weighted now we go to it again and here we have the matrix and then we have spot so yeah even more settings to explore on a higher model phone and that's what i cannot encourage highly enough if you're using your phone and you have a nice model phone it's nice and recent again if it's an iphone explore it uh, go on youtube find some uh, tutorials on going through the camera read that book as well and of course with the samsung as you can clearly see the higher the model the more funky dslr features you're going to have with it explore experiment and explore all right, as you can see, we've got the daytime setup going on right here. Something a bit different, <laughs> as you can see. But if you look over at our settings on the left, you'll see we've got it at the 16.9 aspect ratio. And of course, if you look down the main settings in front of you, we've got the ISO down to 160. Okay, so reduce that a little bit, and but increased the aperture to 120 because obviously I wanted a little bit more of the background in view. And we're going for the manual focus this time and the white balance at 3100. And of course, with the manual settings, if I poke you here, I'm having to hold on to the phone because you get it this low, I couldn't use my tripod. Okay, so it gives you a look at what I've done here. So I've decreased the shadowing a little bit. So we've got a little bit of highlight, a little bit more saturation, reduced the contrast, and of course the tint is remaining neutral. All right, and here we have one of the brand new setups and we're using a digital camera for this. This is the first one with the DSLR camera. Okay, so this is a new setup we've got using the Punisher. And as you can see here, we're just using this, these alleyway pieces that I use for my showcase. And we've just made them into a narrow street alleyway. And we've got the Punisher trudging down forward, ready to start his night's work. Okay, so before I do the settings, I just want to go over the lighting with you. Okay, so we've got quite a few lights in this shot, quite a few of the smart rig lights and a few of the lamps. So as you can see here, we've got this desk lamp and we've got the one above also helping the, uh, the display to stand up. We've got small rig light up there. Okay, that's coming through the windows. All right, and we're to this side, we've got a red one. This is giving a bit of color, a bit of variation coming through. And right at the back there behind the dumpster, we have another one. And that's just gonna shine upwards. All right, I'm gonna be shining that one upwards. I'm gonna hit it with the vape. All right, and that's gonna give some nice steamy atmosphere behind. And at the back, as you can see, we've got the black towel in use, giving us that non-reflective infinite black background. Okay, so it just looks dark and dingy behind him. All right, and yeah, so I'm really happy with how this one's set up. All right, so now we're gonna have a look at the settings. Okay, so let's flick them on. And I've got to take you this way because I've got it upright in a portrait style. So here we are. All right, so as you can see, we have the shutter speed and the f-stop and the ISO and the uh, white balance all set up here. So we've got the shutter speed at 1.5. We've got the f-stop open at 11. I just wanted a little bit more light in with some of the other bits of the environment in focus. But we've got the ISO low at 400 as it is a low light shot. Okay, so I didn't want any of that noise. And the white balance is daylight. Okay, so as you can see there, with the low light shot, the light isn't directly coming at the Punisher. It's cutting across him. All right, just cutting across past his head. So it's illuminating enough from above and just from the side. Okay, so that's why we got the ISO quite low and it won't give us that noisy grain. So uh, yeah, so that is the settings for this one. So now we're going to take the shot and see how we get on. 
All right, and here we have the second of our new setups with the digital camera. And you can see we've got Logan, Mr. Wolverine himself and his wolf companion, and they're charging through the forest. Now this is a daytime shot. So we've changed the settings up from the nighttime. And of course, as you can see, we've got loads and loads of light in this one. We've got the three lamps. We've got the two white and the one yellow coming in, lighting up Logan and the wolf. And we've got some light, some of those small rigs at the backdrop really lighting up my wallpaper there okay and we've got this nice woodland little setting as you can see we've got the wolf he's on a flight stand which is uh being hidden by his paws keeping off the ground and we've got wolverine on one as well as he's jumping over the log all right so as we're flicking over to the camera but as you can see they're really happy with the setup some of these trees are custom made by me some i bought custom made and of course we've got the uh, debris on the ground giving you that forest woodland floor base and look with some other foliage as well and obviously some of the uh, fish tank foliage at the back to give you some of that trees and some of that leafy atmosphere in the distance then let's flick over to the settings now as you can see we've got the shutter speed is opened up more because we want more light in we've dropped the f-stop aperture down just slightly to compensate for the open shutter speed but we've got our iso at 800 we've increased that obviously because it's a daytime shot we've got tons more light coming into the lens and obviously we've still got the daytime uh, white balance going on okay so yeah really really happy with this setup uh, lots of action and lots of motion and I cannot wait to see how this one turns out. Now when it comes to camera settings, I consider them just as much a part of the grind as posing, framing, staging and lighting. Camera settings are the last piece of the puzzle, the final cherry on top to get your shot looking as best as possible before hitting that shutter button. And that is it for this episode. Thank you again so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this series so far as we've got one more episode left, but that is not the end of the toy photography journey on this channel. So if you like what you've seen so far and you want to see more, definitely consider hitting that like button and the subscribe button and we'll take toy photography to the next level. Thanks again and take care.